designed to encourage, empower, and educate real estate professionals by sharing best practices from business leaders that are proven winners. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and this is Calibrate Real Estate. Broadcasting from the Mile High City. Thank you for tuning in to the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. This is episode 54, and I'm your host, Kyle Malnati. Well, this episode is taped in front of a live audience of over 300 people. I was invited to a Keller Williams Mastermind, and uh, this is an exciting discussion with Ron Cathell. If you don't know Ron Cathell, he has been a realtor for a number of years. He actually started out as a real estate investor, and you'll hear more of his story. He kind of uh, backed into real estate brokerage, really started out as, as an investor, and I had the opportunity to share the stage with Ron. This was an exciting discussion about both being a high-quality real estate broker, but then also being a great real estate investor. And I think that that is something that's important for all of us that are real estate professionals is to invest in our very industry and to grow wealth through real estate investing. I have an affinity for Ron, especially because he is from Keller Williams in McLean, Virginia. My grandparents, my aunt and my uncle all live in McLean, Virginia. My mom grew up there. For those of you that don't know Northern Virginia, McLean's just about 10, 15 minutes right outside of Washington, D.C. proper. You just hop down the George Washington Parkway, down the hill, past the Potomac River, and you're right in D.C. So enjoy this live interview with Ron Cathell of the Cathell team at Keller Williams in McLean, Virginia. And I'll be back to teach a little bit about this episode. Thanks. What I love to learn about real estate investors is I love to first understand what their story is. Uh, most real estate investors didn't just come up with this idea on their own. They have a guide or a mentor, someone that showed them the real estate industry and, and encouraged them to invest. So Ron, what, uh, who is your guide, mentor, and kind of what's your story? How would you get your start? Ooh, um, so I got my start in real estate as a child. <laughs> it's, uh, I know that seems unusual, but my parents um, owned real estate when I was growing up in Southern California. I grew up in the Los Angeles area, and uh, they started acquiring rental properties. My dad was a broker in California for about 30 years, so I kind of grew up around it, and I listened to it. I wasn't interested in it. It wasn't my thing, and, but I knew that they stayed busy over the weekends, and they had to meet with contractors, and they were always having to go out to collect rent. So I kind of grew up around it, but um, when I became a young adult and it was time to do something on my own, I wanted nothing to do with what my parents did. I'm sure you can understand that. And um, so I went out on my own and did my own thing. And it really wasn't until um, after uh, my father passed away that I went into real estate. And I started off in real estate, actually I started investing in real estate before I became a real estate agent. So. I've been an investor for 34 years. I know I only look 39, but um, I've been an investor for 34 years. Why is everybody years. laughing? Because <laughs> they know it's not true. <laughs> and, um, and did it quite purposefully. We'll talk about that in a moment. And, um, and my father actually helped us buy a property out in California, which was important to us because we traveled to California frequently. And if you own an investment property somewhere other than where you are, for example, if you own a property in the Bahamas or in the Caribbean, you have to go and visit it periodically, and that trip is a tax deduction. So we traveled to California a lot because of family, and so every time we went there, it was a tax deduction because we had to go and inspect our property. One of the little benefits of being a real estate investor. And uh, so fast forward, um, I go back to school, I get an MBA from Georgetown, and I get done with it, and I decide I don't want to be in the business that I've been in before, which was running nonprofits. I used to be a journalist. My business was mostly in the Middle East, and I just went cold turkey. I quit all that, went back to school. When I got done, I had a passion for real estate, so I started a company called Renaissance Classics to do real estate development. And we did that for a year or two, and I had a blast doing that, but I got a real estate license just so that I could facilitate the transactions for our company. But friend said, help us sell our house. I said, no, that's not the kind of real estate I do. I'll find you a great agent from my brokerage, which happened to be Weikert. I see Steve Gaskins in the back there. 
Um, and they said, no, 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 we want you to do it, we want you to do it. I said, no, that's not what I do. No, we want you to do it. I said, okay, just this once, I'll do that. And then another friend said, help us buy something. And I went through this, no, I'll find a great agent for you to help you buy something. That's not, no, we want you to do it. I said, okay, I'll do it this one time. So I did those two residential transactions and I came home one night and I said to my wife, this was fun. This was fun. Let's, we'll continue doing the development stuff that we're doing but I'm going to go into sales, and as long as there are two things that I can get out of doing sales, I'll stay in it. If one of those falls out, then I'll go back and we'll do something else. We'll go to real estate development, we'll go back and do stuff, be a writer, be a journalist, whatever I want to do. And those two things are, gotta have fun. It's gotta be fun. It's gotta be something that you're passionate about. And the second one was, gotta make money. It's that simple. So, started investing in 1982. We bought our first home. It was our primary residence. Three years later, we bought our first investment property. Um, and the reason for that was, which we'll get to in a second on the three critical things I want you guys to take away from today, is that it was gonna be um, our nine-month-old daughter's way to go to college. We were gonna invest in this property. We we're gonna hang on to it until it's time for her to go to school. And then that was what we were gonna to use to pay for her to go to college. 17 years later, when it's time for her to go to college, that property, we still owned it, as well as a lot of others, but that property was appreciating every year. We paid 98,000 for it. In a little area of Old Town Alexandria called Rosemont. We knew the Metro had opened up a year and a half before and we knew what was gonna happen. So we went into that area, strategic. That's the only thing we're gonna talk about. Um, and 17 years later, when it's time to sell it, it was going up every year at $50,000 a year in value. That was enough to pay for my daughter's college education every year at the University of Southern California and then later at Columbia University. So why would I kill the golden goose? Right? So we, we kept the property for about another six or seven years after that and then finally sold it. So that's kind of a back way of telling you a little bit about my background in real estate and how I got into it. I did not start off as a real estate agent. I was in doing investments and then that took me into doing sales and I'm still doing sales. I'm still having fun. And uh, one of these days I hope to start making some money. How many rental properties do you own? About units well, about 20 properties we've had over 30 properties since we started investing um, number of units is probably about 27 28 units because some of them are multifamily. our strategy was basically to we followed the warren buffett approach to, to investing okay the warren buffett approach is buy blue chip like buy quality and hang on buy and hold very simple but you buy quality, that's the most important thing. And what would you guys say is quality in real estate? How do you determine what quality is? Come on. Location, 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 right? So we focused everything that we were buying on great locations, and why? If you have a great location, you'll always keep it rented. You'll never have vacancies. So we focused on great locations. We bought good quality of product. Another thing that Kyle and I talked about on the phone the other day was um, he said something about, well, you know, in real estate, you come across good deals. And I said to him, you know, it's interesting because out of all of the prop properties we bought, I don't think there were any that we bought that were not on the market. So Buffett's approach is he studies the company and he is not afraid to pay fair market value when he's investing in that company. He knows what it's gonna, he knows how it's gonna produce over time. So when you're investing in real estate, don't be afraid to pay fair market value. Our most recent purchase was about four months ago. I was traveling, I come back, it's a Sunday night, it's late, and my wife says, there's a property that just came on the market, we've gotta buy it. And I go, can I get some sleep? And she says, no. <laughs> They're reviewing offers at noon tomorrow, Monday. And it was listed for 985 or 989 or something like that. But the location was a 
as prime as it gets in the state of Virginia. I don't know if you guys know the Clarendon area of Arlington, but this is in the epicenter and it's a single family home. There were 12 offers on it. We got it. I didn't even see the house. I didn't walk in, I didn't even see it until after our contract was ratified. I didn't know what I bought, but I knew the location, I knew how much dirt was there, and I knew that we could fix whatever was there. So we've now put about 100,000 into it. We ended up paying over a little over 1.2. If I put that market, property on the market today, I would probably sell it for at least 1.6. But that's short term. And that means I gotta take that money and put it into something else, which is very time consuming and it's a hassle. I'm just gonna hang on to it and rent it and that is gonna be part of our retirement. So that's yeah. I love the I love the Buffett comment. What I've noticed yeah. about most of the real estate yeah. investors that I interact with interact with is that best real estate investors are inherently collectors. They don't typically sell, and and you'll see time and time again when you meet real estate investors that are that are in it for the long term. It's very very easy to win in that game when you never sell. You know, if you handle That's the right. property right, you've got good capable management. You're not over leveraged. Yep. It becomes really really simple. Yep. So. What I'd like to know is how much more time do we have? There's a couple that there's some things I want to cover with you guys because you guys came here under the ruse that you're going to learn something about wealth building. And to try to talk about wealth building in an hour or in 15 minutes is like I mentioned to somebody earlier, it's like trying to have a short discussion about the social implications of the Constitution in the 21st century. Okay? It's just there's so many ways that this can go. You can go very shallow and you can go very, very deep. So how much time do we have? Because there's three things that I want to cover. I think we got five or 10 minutes. Five or 10 minutes? Here's the thing, three things. Write this down. The most important thing about building wealth, investing in real estate is just one aspect of that. But the most important thing about building wealth is mindset. You've heard this before. We heard it in great terms from Bo last night. Kyle has talked about it, others today have talked about it. What does that mean? For you, when it comes to building wealth, it means that you must be purposeful. You have to look at it and understand what is your big why. Why do you wanna do this? Is it just about money or is it because you wanna create something? Is it just about putting a lot of money in the bank or is it about doing something unique and special and helping other people? Know what your passion is. Know what you care about so much. I asked this question to the people last night. I'll ask you, it's not rhetorical. I wanna see some hands come up. Tell me, to answer this question, what do these people have in common? Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Oprah Winfrey, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, I could go on. What do they have in common? What? Changing the world. Change, change they machines. Give back. They help, they give back. help people grow. They give back. Billionaires. Billionaires. When they started out doing what they're doing, they didn't start out saying, I want to go build wealth. They said, I want to go out and do something nobody else has done before. I want to create something. The wealth part came along as part of it. So you have to be purposeful. You have to know why you're, you want to pursue what you're going to pursue. You have to be purposeful. You need to know what your big why is and you have to be passionate about it. Because if you aren't, you won't be able to stay focused. If you are, you'll be able to stay committed and dedicated to achieving the goals. So that's the other part of it. Is the mindset is you also have to set your goals. And like Kennedy's great speech, uh, before Congress, he said, I want our nation to go to put a man on the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is difficult, and put him in the moon, to the moon, and bring him back safely within the decade. He said that in 1963. It was only seven years. By the way, all those guys at NASA that was watching this speech, they soiled their pants when they heard that. They're going, we're going to do this. So you have to be purposeful, you have to have a goal and then you have to be able to stick to it. Second thing, time. You've got to understand time. What does it mean when you're investing? What does it mean when you're trying to build wealth? It has to be your friend. One of the things I said to Kyle the other day on the phone is, time is a funny thing. 
Those who ignore it are fools. Those who embrace it are fulfilled. But those who understand it build empires. It takes time to achieve something great. It takes time to build wealth. And you guys are in a field, in an industry, where this is at your fingertips. There's no better way to build wealth than through owning and controlling as much real estate as you can with the least amount of your own money, leveraging. So these are the important things. The third thing is sacrifice. Kyle mentioned it in passing. Bo talked about it a lot last night. In, where do you start? If you wanna start building wealth, you wanna start investing in real estate as one of your vehicles for building wealth, where do you start? You start by saving. You have to have something to invest. So when I say sacrifice, what that means is you're gonna live below your means for a while until you have enough money to invest in something. So you have to know, it starts off with what is your budget? How much money do you need every month to pay your bills, to put your kids in school, to put shoes on them? How much do you need? How much do you make? It doesn't, you can build wealth starting from absolutely nothing. Our country is full of people that have done this, but they did it because they lived below their means. It doesn't matter whether they were making 30,000 a year or they were making 300,000 a year. You can do it, but it means a little bit of sacrifice now for the rewards that are gonna come later. When my wife and I started investing in real estate, we didn't do it with the idea that we wanted to build wealth. We, our purpose, our big why was we wanted to create security in our old age. Back in early 80s, a lot of discussion, political discussion about the Social Security Administration. Don't count on it, it's not gonna be around. By the time my generation is ready, you're gonna get 30 bucks a month, good luck. So we wanted to create security for us and for our family. That was our big why, and that's why we started doing what we were doing. As you have goals, Kyle has talked about this, Bo has talked about this, as you have goals and you started having some success and achieving things, your goals will likely change. Your goals will likely change because you've achieved something. Now you gotta go bigger. Now you gotta do something else. So our goal was we wanna create security for ourselves. Our mindset was we're going to save we're gonna have a plan, we're gonna have a strategy, and we're gonna stay focused on it over time, and then we're gonna make it happen. So, to put a little more clarity to it, we set out to buy an investment property every other year. We could save enough money to buy an investment property every other year. Some years we bought two. A couple, two or three years would go by, we didn't buy any, depending on the opportunities that came along. So that's how we did what we did. And, um, but here are the three things, I wanna repeat them. I want you guys to write these things down. One is your big why, what is your purpose? Understand it, know what it is. Second is you have to understand the concept of time. And the third thing is for you to get started, you have to be able to save, live below your means and use that money strategically to plan to get better rewards in the future than what you could have fun with them right now. That's basically the start. So one of the questions that I ask a lot of people as I talk about real estate success is I think it's dangerous to study success only. And uh, I oftentimes look at my successes as standing on a mountain of failure, uh, things that didn't work out. So maybe talk about the lessons you've learned as things didn't work out the way you planned in your investment journey. Failure? Oh, failures are a friend. You learn so much more from failure than you do from your successes, right? So much more. So when you do fail, when something doesn't work, what you need to do is you've got to step back, gain a little bit of perspective, and analyze it. What did I say? What could I have said? What didn't happen? Was the strategy wrong? Was the implementation wrong? Where did it go wrong? When you feel as though you've kind of got a, a handle on that, then put it behind you and just keep going. You just keep going, you keep, you literally you keep going, failing forward. You guys have heard that many times and it's absolutely true. So don't be afraid of failure. You cannot, uh, what is it, uh, Wayne Gretzky's great quote, you can never make the shots that you'd never take. 
You cannot make the shots that you never take. So take the shots. Um, take risk. There is going to be risk. There's always risk. You try to understand what it is. You try to plan for it. You try to mitigate it as much as you can, but there's always going to be some risk. Oh, like I took a risk. I come home from a trip. My wife says 1130 at night, you know, we got to get our offer in on this property right away because otherwise it'll be gone. We, you know, and she, on these kinds of things, um, I know she's right. <laughs> she's always right, and, but but I know who's got to go implement, right? And I'm going, God, I got so much stuff to do. And I'm, okay, I'll, I'll do this. We'll get this thing in. Um, and she was right, and it's a phenomenal investment, and I'm glad that we bought it. the property. We did it, by the way, through 1031 Starker Exchange. What's that? Did you tell her she was right? I eventually, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've learned a few things. Yes. So Gr gratitude and appreciation, that's another lesson that we've learned uh, lately, right? Gratitude and appreciation. One of the questions I ask every real estate investor is, um, what books are you reading personally? And what's your favorite nonfiction, either business or personal development book? Mm. Ooh, that's tough, that's a good one. So um, right now I'm reading a biography on Benjamin Franklin. I've had a lot of favorite Americans um, historical Americans in my life as I've grown up when I was a kid, it was Davy Crockett. What a cool guy. Um, um, and, you know, as a young adult, Thomas Jefferson, and I studied a lot about him. But I got to tell you, um, so it's a book written by uh, Walter Isaacson. I don't know if you've read his stuff, but he's phenomenal, brilliant man. And he's written this small little easy read on Benjamin Franklin that's about 800 pages. And, um, and it's, he's absolutely phenomenal. We would not be sitting here, guys. We would not be having this discussion if it wasn't for Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. This man was more influential in the launching of our country than any other human being. Way beyond Washington, way beyond Jefferson, way beyond Adams and Madison. So I read about him and every page I just go and I think, you know, thank God that we are standing on his shoulders and what he did for our country to get us launched. So that one, um, business kind of a book, um, two, I think, that have had a huge impact on me. Um, early on when I was a young man, um, in the first couple of years of college, this is a little bit of a philosophy book. And I'm telling you, wealth building, investing in real estate is more philosophical than it is financial because it is primarily about mindset. So this was a little book, it was a small, easy read, written by a guy named Herman Hess called Siddhartha. If you haven't read it, it's a classic, you've got to read it. It's the story of young Buddha. And young Buddha was a businessman. And he married a woman who was a very successful businesswoman. And one of the lessons I took from that was, he was tasked with going into a village to um, take orders and sell some merchandise. And by the time he got there, a competitor had beaten him to the village and had gone through and met with all of the merchants and had taken all of their orders and taken all of their money. And they didn't want to buy anything that Siddhartha had to sell. And now he's got to go back and say, I was a failure. He's got to tell his wife, mindset. Right? But here's what he did. He took, he saw an opportunity. He was there, he had money. So he stayed in that village for a month or so, I forget the length of time, but long enough to go around and meet and break bread and spend time with all of those merchants and to buy a little bit of something from everybody. And he developed relationships. So the next time he went back to that village, he got all of the orders and rather than the competitor, and he kept them as clients forever. So Siddhartha, it's, it's philosophy, it's religious, it's theology a little bit, not so much really. It has, makes it more philosophical. Yeah. And then, uh, but on a practical note, uh, I think the best book that I have read on business is Gary and Jay's The One Thing. How many of you have not yet read it? I'll admit it. I haven't read it yet. You haven't read it. You gotta read it. It's an easy read. It's an eighth grade read. I mean, they really did, you know, chunk it down so that 
Um, we as real estate agents can understand it. <laughs> and they did all the research. They did all the research. And it's all right there. So the concept of the one thing is set goals, be strategic, make a plan, have your steps, break down each step until you can't break it down anymore. And then that becomes the next most important thing that you need to do. That's simple. That's it in a nutshell. Now you don't have to read it. So we've at the end of our time, but I think the most important thing that I want to know with this question of asking about books is that great real estate investors as well as great realtors are avid learners. They're constantly learning. They're constantly working on their craft. They're constantly managing their mindset because we all have things that happen on a daily basis that can knock us down. What can we do to build ourselves back up? And so that's that's why I adopt that habit of reading. It's important. Ron, it's a pleasure. You know all what? right, we're back. Wasn't that an awesome episode where we interview Ron as a real estate investor? And as you can tell, he's got a lot of experience. He's been doing this for over 35 years. So I liked how he started out as a real estate investor and then moved into real estate brokerage sort of by default, right? I mean, friends and family are asking him to help them sell their properties. And the biggest takeaways that I had were Ron's three basic ideas, uh, if you will, about wealth building. Number one is mindset. And I, what I like here is Ron reminds us that we must be purposeful. You set goals and you stick to them. What's your big why? Ron reminded us, and we've talked a lot about the topic of why and purpose and Simon Sinek, as well as pastors that talk about why and talk about purpose. So why do you want to invest in real estate in the first place? Why do you want to be in real estate as a broker in the first place? Your answer should have something to do with an opportunity that's unique and special and that helps other people, in my opinion. Next, item number two, is understand time. Time's a funny thing, Ron reminds us. Those who ignore it are fools, and those who embrace it are fulfilled. Those who understand it build empires. It takes time, T-I-M-E, to build something great. Therefore, it takes time to build wealth. For those of you that know me or have listened to our podcast and subscribed for a while, know that I'm a big believer in the tortoise always beats the hare. Slow and steady wins the race, and we build an empire by starting with a foundation. You may have heard this, but the longest period of time in a construction project is building the foundation. The foundation takes oftentimes more than half of the construction project. You wanna get it right, and it's very expensive. And oftentimes as I'm driving around the city or have been involved in my own construction projects, it seems like it takes forever to get through building the foundation. Then all of a sudden, you see the first floor and the second floor built really quickly after the foundation is in and approved. Then sacrifice, item number three. So where do you start? You start by saving, saving your money so that you might invest. Now, this is uh, not popular. It's actually countercultural if you think about it, but this idea of get rich quick just doesn't cut it. And, and Ron talks about that at length. So we live on a budget. You live on less than you make, stop keeping up with the Joneses, and you've got to live below your means to save enough money to invest. Sacrifice now for rewards later. Delay your gratification today for a better tomorrow. So those are the big takeaways from Ron Cathell. Some insights that I have from the show is real estate investing at times is more philosophical than financial. My buddy Dave Ramsey that I've met and spent some time with says that that investing or financial knowledge is 80% common sense and behavior and 20% head knowledge or financial analytics. So again, 80% of it is behavior based and 20% of it's head knowledge. Uh, another takeaway, another insight from the show, set goals, be strategic, make a plan, break down the plan into small steps. Great real estate investors are avid learners, have a growth mindset. Do not be afraid to pay fair market value if it's a quality asset. Blue chip investments, if you're on the stock market, are available really at any time. But in real estate, it's different. You, I've seen this over time where blue chip investments in real estate tend to get sold when the market is high. So you can't be afraid to buy a quality asset in a great location when the market is high because if you're going to own it over the long time, 
30, 40, 50 years, and this is a long game, we're playing the long game, it's okay to pay market value for something. The best real estate investors are collectors. They buy and hold is another insight that I just thought you might wanna know about. So finally, don't kill the golden goose. <laughs> real estate brokerage is a wonderful vehicle to getting into real estate investing. And so Ron shared that story about buying a real estate investment to help his daughter get into college. And basically that was a saving vehicle for a college investment. Once she got to the point that she was going to be in college, he didn't sell it. He kept that investment because it was yielding a wonderful return. Now, obviously that was after 17 years of holding it as an investment. So just be thinking about this long-term. If you've got kiddos, real estate investing is a wonderful way to um, put your kids through college. If you are looking at retirement, and I think all of us should look at retirement, real estate investing is a great way to hedge against uh, that personal income that we earn year over year in real estate brokerage. So just think about real estate investing as a long investment, and that's really the best way to be successful. So I appreciate Ron Cathell for being our esteemed guest in episode 54 of the Calibrate Real Estate podcast. As you know, we thrive on five-star reviews. That's something that makes our show more relevant for people. So if you would leave a five-star review in Apple iTunes specifically, and if you would subscribe on Apple iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube, that just gives us so much life here at the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. For my podcast producer, Kayla Davis, for the cast of thousands of people listening, reviewing, watching, however you subscribe to our podcast. We are so appreciative. I'm Kyle Malnati for Ron Cathell. We will see you around the neighborhood. Bye everybody. Thanks so much.